ada tu untuk datang uh, saya ingin fungsi sedikit tentang pencapaian Pak Puki lah uh, buat masa ini berkaitan dengan perlibatan uh, secara keseluruhan kalau kita lihat pada jurnal uh, terindeks bersih uh, kita dah capai target uh, actually capai target seperti yang tahun lepas lah uh, sehingga ke tarikh eh, tarikh atas kita print Hari ini, okay. So pada hari ini lah kita dah Actually sama dengan last year performance Dan kita expect ada lagi A few yang akan grow on this One month plus ni lah Akan ada lagi untuk add on kepada numbers ni uh, Dari segi uh, individual Punya performance pun I think uh, at this moment Semua ada uh, Publication Except seorang tu Yang masih kosong nanti Uh, yang ini kita tengah uh, push juga lah tengah bantu untuk tengok bagaimana untuk untuk memastikan this one person pun at least ada satu paper lah. Uh, so kita dapat peningkatan lah dari segi uh, a person yang apa tu yang publish tu. So itu as a whole lah uh, performance pada kita. Uh, dari segi performance keseluruhan di UKM. Dari segi fakulti, kita tak nak compare dengan institut pendidikan Because they are, apa tu Don't even focus on public saja. So, kita berada top Fakulti Farmasi is the top Sekarang ni, untuk of ratio Paper per pencara tu uh, Kemudian, untuk of keseluruhan UKM Kita nombor dua Seri nombor one By the mistake So, we have to keep the momentum Err uh, Cuma the, the challenges yang kita akan hadapi next year Ialah tentang sokongan untuk uh, pembayaran jenama Itu yang kita tak pasti lagi Berapa banyak kita boleh, boleh secure lah Yang, yang I, I think ada yang last month hantar lagi kepada I all the apa tu? Uh, Yang telah diluluskan, eh yang telah diterima dan nak publish Untuk pembayaran, kita dah forward tu kepada krim lah Untuk krim nilai dan Lihat mana-mana kewangan yang ada untuk support kita lagi Itu belum dijawab lagi <coughs> Sebab we will have another meeting with cream So that one I can uh, push lagi lah about the money Sebab kita ada lagi like, paper But yang yang akan diterbitkan But because of money kita tak boleh Nak dapat the numbers uh, So itu saja yang saya nak share Ratio bagus kan? Ratio sekarang 2 point something right? 2 point something Sebab kita uh, Kita 29 Total active So kalau 29 Sebab uh, ini 60 lah So kita dah lebih dari 2 Kita average 3 Average 3 uh, Kita jantikan pun 3 hari tu Okay so uh, Thank you uh, kepada semua yang hadir untuk hari ini So, uh, hari ini kita ada First, kita ada sesi perkongsian Daripada, I think everybody should know Prof. Ibrahim <laughs> uh, I think Prof. Ibrahim contributes the most lah uh, Untuk faculty ni up to now Paper uh, yang dihasilkan untuk Prof. Ibrahim 17 Paper <coughs> So, 17 tu just the numbers first And when you look at the 17 You look at the quality So the quality is also more uh, Q1 and Q2 You know, so It's the most and also the highest impact lah. So, program juga tersenarai dalam the first 50 uh, Highest citation Punya betul, uh, author Di seluruh UKM So for that, uh, kita invite program Untuk uh, share with us about uh, the planning of writing good quality uh, papers and hopefully how you can get higher impact then how, what is the strategy of choosing journals lah uh, that's what uh, yang kita more than prefer to share with us lah so, what do I do? Selamat datang kepada Prof. Ibrahim Okay, Assalamualaikum 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 Terima kasih kepada Tuan Mohd. Saya rasa pujian memang bawa. Kami just tak kena berdiri. 
sebutkan kita bekerja keras dan dapat hasil seperti mana yang kita usahakan uh, So I will I use English as one medium of communication here kalau boleh, boleh juga interaksi dalam bilang I think some of my students, they have listened to my lecture, they might feel new ideas, especially on the publication strategies. Eh? When they're writing a uh, journal paper too, I think they, they have, some of them have listened to my talk on this. Okay, uh, Konsian. Konsian means that I'm going to share with you, it doesn't mean that this is the best practice. So, kalau uh, you can Yes, uh, come up with your opinion during my talk. You are very welcome. So I'll, I'll start with writing a journal paper. Uh, this will be the major component of my talk, and then followed by the publication strategies. Uh, this is just very basic. Where I should know that we should be doing scientific research. Uh, it's not pseudoscience. We have to do. Uh, Good science. So, uh, we, by doing scientific research, uh, very important all aspect of hypothesis, research question, and so on, you have to be there. Uh, research, scientific research, is actually gathering of data, information, and facts for advancement of knowledge. And then we want to establish the facts, the affirm results of previous work, previous in your area especially, and and solve new or existing problems, support. Uh, uh, theories that have been been put forward by great scientists before, or you can develop your own theories. So this is scientific research. Uh, scientific research uh, undergoes an experimental process and is stepwise, very systematic, and you follow a standard uh, protocol. And of course, you have uh, to uh, do a lot of literature review past research and then you come, have to come up with your research questions. What are research questions to be answered? And then what is research questions? Research usually starts with a problem. The first step before you begin writing research papers to formulate a research question, you need to have your problem statement and then from there you know what, what is your research question. For example, uh, what are, this example, what are the structure requirements of curcumin analog for development into immunomodulating Agent. This is your research question. And, and also another example, what type of biopolymers is useful as carriers in a targeted every system or anti-cancer types? So you have to know your research question first, and then come up with your purchases, uh, provide a specific statement and clarification of the problem statement, research question, and so on. And this is very important before you start any research project. Uh, you need to have this question in mind. To develop strong research questions from your ideas, you should ask yourself these things. Do I know the field and its literature well? What are the important research questions in my field? What areas need further exploration? Could my study fill a gap, fill a research gap? Can it lead to a greater understanding of the area? Has a great deal of research already been conducted in this topic area? Has this study been done before? You don't reinvent the wheel. If so, there is room. Is there any room for improvement? Is the timing right for this question to be answered? Is it a hot topic now, or is yes, becoming obsolete or not relevant anymore? Will the results of my study lead to publication in peer review? You know, it's very important. When you do your research, you have to make sure at the end of the uh, study, you can come up with a peer a manuscript able to be published in peer review journals. And most importantly, will my study have a significant impact in the field, because you, at the end, you need us later on when you move up the, the ladder, the academic ladder, you need, you need to be recognized as an expert in the three R, uh, as suggested by uh, you can refer, recognize, ref, refer, uh, refer, uh, respected, and relevant. <laughs> See this in my slide. So most research projects share the same general structures, and you, you begin with the broad questions, you have to read aspects of the 
properly. And then you narrow down to your to your particular research question, and that focus zoom in, and then how to operate, how to operationalize, and then later on you when you do the experiment you observe and observe, and then observe, then you analyze the data you obtain, and reach the conclusions, and then last back to the question whether you have achieved what you have uh, hypothesized, what you have to plan, and whether you have answered the research question. Okay, uh, you cannot, each of these activity cannot stand on its own. Uh, when you want to write a uh, good research paper, when you want to publish papers to good journal, uh, you need to have the other, the other steps. Other steps also to be good and excellent, or maybe, or maybe perhaps excellent. Writing research proposal right from the beginning, you have to know what are the, as I mentioned just now, research question, hypothesis and so on. Implementation research project is very important. You need to have good postgraduate research for giving you, good research team. Uh, and then completion of research project, you have to know the scope and whether you have produced excellent results, uh, fit enough or uh, attain appropriate level to be submitted to good journal. And then analysis of research data is very important. Only some people can have a lot of projects ongoing or come up with a lot of data, but they have difficulty to analyze the data and to come up, especially in statistics and so on. So these are the things that will, I think will hinder the onwards and the writing research papers. Because when you write research papers, you need all the, uh, the other activities, because you need all the information, you need all the uh, and having a good research group, having a good PhD student, master students is very important. And then submission papers for publication. Okay, to write a good research paper requires an effective technical writing skill. So you need to develop, how you want to develop effective technical writing skill, you need to have knowledge, experience, and practice. So you, I think the most important is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, I have about 20 years of experience, uh, 10 years as research officer, and then 20 years academic. I think, uh, you know, look at my my career path. I begin with, with poor, no, not not an excellent writer, but because of practice. I, I remember first when I first submitted my paper for publication. Uh, that was no online and so on. You, you need to submit uh, hard copy. You can wait for for a few months to get a response on the publication process. It takes about one year. And I have, I still have my first uh, <laughs> this manuscript. <laughs> manuscript. Revised manuscript. The the editor, you know, he he paste the correction with kind of paste, no? put it on paper and paste on a lot of weight. That's my first paper, um, and during that time, we didn't know what's impact factor, what is all this. But still, this is a process, a training process. So as I said, practice is very important. Of course, experience comes together. Then knowledge, you need to do a lot of reading, a lot of uh, studying about new areas, especially uh, general, general papers, read a lot of them. Okay, producing a good research paper is not an easy task, everybody knows. Takes time, experience. You have to work sometimes the weekend, late night, and sacrifice. Means planning and willing to spend long hours to complete the task is rewarding. But if it beneficial effects on your academic research career, you get promoted because of your hard work. It gives satisfaction, very important. Increase knowledge of the topic, you become expert. I told my students, you can be better than me after you finish your thesis. Because you are a person who knows about them well, you read a lot more than me. And who's of, and then of course, later, when you work very hard, your opinion, people will listen to. So these are things that are uh, very pertinent or very important uh, as a good writer, good is good research paper. Writing a research paper involves uh, finding information. I mean, finding information from the library, finding information from your experimental data and so on. And then making good judgment. Got the data, a lot of data, sometimes rubbish, sometimes just uh, experimental error, sometimes outliers and so on. You need to evaluate, give a good judgment about the information. 
And then the next one is not easy to organize information into a co coherent report from the paper. Because paper is not like writing a storybook. It's a very technical writing. thing. They have limit uh, economy of words and so on. So organizing information into a coherent report is in a practice. Okay, information in research paper comes from materials from library, from journal, books, proceedings, and so on, online articles, and then research outputs, either from lab, experiment, clinical trial, field service, and so on. Okay, this is the, the thing, different people may have different way of doing it, but this is, I think, the general or common way people uh, start, how they start, how they plan to write research papers. Involve three essential operations. First is searching. Searching, what I mean by searching, if I, my, I usually train my, my students, post students, I want as ask them to spend a few weeks or maybe one month to go to the library, go and look for material, read, read, and read. Get material to understand the topic very well. Choose a good topic for a research paper and exhaustively find relevant information from libraries, websites, and other media. It's very important to understand. And then reading, understanding of the materials you are reading. Recognize what information is useful to your research group. Good judgment and then writing. This is the, this is the uh, most critical part. The ability to organize the, to organize the pieces of information competent with the language and a fine writing skill. What you need to do is students need to communicate well in English. To my group, my students communicate in English. So I'm not saying it that. Uh, that I might be Malaysia, but it's a training practice because uh, part of being a scientist, you have a good writing skill, especially in English. So, so what, what do you mean by fine writing style? <coughs> fine writing style. Uh, the fine writing style is a technical writing. <coughs> technical writing. You, you have uh, people can write very flowery English. Can I say that? When we write, when we write paper, economy of words, the double A. So, long sentence, how to make it concise, and then all the meaning is there. And then there's a fine writing skill in, in technical writing. So, we took, in then I think, years of experience, you know, the sentence too flowery, is too long. So, try to shorten it. So, for example, I try, I try to ask you to write 150 words. So, but all the important components will be there, result have to be, to have to be highlighted. So, the economy of words is very important. So, uh, searching for topic and for sources. This actually is being done between students and supervisors. And it depends, depends on level, knowledge, or uh, how competent is the students. If you have good PhD students or master students, they do it by themselves. Yeah. Little provision by the supervisor, but sometimes it's all done by the supervisor. Because they will uh, give you a topic and so on. So it's a learning process actually, but it's okay. Uh, some, because of their background, experience, they can be more independent. Some may need more help, especially in going into new area of research. So first step is arriving at a topic. Read art on the subject in references, uh, sub in general, textbook, look for a topic that can be easily covered within the assigned limits of your paper. Form a hypothesis, and then what answers you expect to find for the major research question. This is actually the, the beginning. Yeah? You search for material, for general, read, uh, information to equip yourself, understand, to understand the topic very well, because you want to find a title, okay. topic, we did a scope of study, it's a master's bit, which I will be And And you have to reach a level for postgraduate students, whichever they can communicate and talk the same chemistry with the supervisor. Understand what the supervisor has paid. Otherwise, you have a problem because there's a, you cannot catch up the point. Uh, the, what is the expectation of the supervisor? So that's the reason why when you first start yeah, uh, doing your postgraduate studies, you need to read a lot, to get all information, and finally, if possible, come up with your own topic, which is very close to the scope of the, of the grant, for example. Yeah. So, and search exhaustively for information relevant to your hypothesis, skim through the sources, and without 
irrelevant, irrelevant information, check to see if your hypothesis is reasonable, be ready to revise your hypothesis to conform <coughs> to whatever information the scheming reveals. So you read a lot, but you have to know which one is useful, which one is not, which one is relevant, not relevant, and so on. Maybe the help of your supervisor. Because your field, your field can be very specific, and can be multidisciplinary. Some students just work on the chemistry, bio AC, some computer, and so on. So it depends on the scope of study. So we do a lot of reading, and then we can help some supervisor, and can guide you to to uh, come up with the topic with the scope of study. Reading and taking notes, uh, reasonable hypothesis has been formed, and sufficient number of sources has been collected. Read the sources closely and take detailed notes. Take notes on all information that has a direct bearing on your hypothesis. So this is a reading process. You read, read, and read. And in fact, you need to read the, the latest, eh? okay, still uh, hot from the oven article. That's why you need a very good research to journal, especially in the area. So when you, if you don't, we don't want to, you to come up with a topic that's been done before or somebody is working on it, or published yes, yesterday. So that's why I need to read, read, and and, so and, and then you derive, uh, you de deriving the thesis, analyze information in your notes to determine whether your hypothesis is correct. If your hypothesis is correct, this becomes your thesis. This becomes a topic, you understand. Your, this major conclusion reached to a thoughtful analysis of all the sources. So it means all you have read, yeah, all information you got from, from reading, from Journals, especially go for journal, good quality, high impact factor journal, uh, if possible. And then you have how to get journal. I know it's a problem because of the administration. Now some journals are not, not easily available. But one way you can do is by networking. If you have a friend, somebody maybe in UK, US, or in Singapore, they can they can help you get some this journal. It's one way. Uh, preparing to write, and then uh, this is writing, the writing part. Arrange your notes into a sensible order then that can serve as an outline of paper. Uh, then sketch out a full introductory paragraph that includes a precise statement of your thesis. Write the outline. This is what you need to do first. So you have all the information from your reading. Yeah? Yeah, write the outline. Outline just like when you uh, put a title, a table of content in your thesis, what the things that you need to, to write. Okay? And then writing the paper. We have uh, some people have four or five drafts and so on, but this is the things that we generally do. Uh, write a paper in three drafts. First, a rough version, concentrating on the flow of thought. It's okay about the grammar and everything if you're not good in the beginning. Uh, just flow, flow of thoughts, a rough version, give to your supervisor, discuss. And then the first version, reorganize the paper, reorganizing the paper, improving the style, and follow the journal, not the summit tool. And then second revision, this is the time that most finalized. You have to eliminate all the errors, make all the corrections, mechanical errors. So, so as I say, some needs maybe five drafts, six drafts, finally nothing come up. But usually good students, good, good <laughs> guidance, I think they can come up in the final draft after the third or maybe the fourth draft. So it depends on the skill and the attractive skill of students. And then uh, noting the sources, this is writing the reference, very important. Eh? Now we have our end notes, we have you, and we have to keep the reading material. Don't just, sometimes if you can get, you can't get the, the full paper, you just get the abstracts, uh, and at least you need to keep the abstracts. Why? Because you need to review them. Because when you send your paper for review, they may ask you questions, question you about things, then you can refer back to your paper. But I know some students that get it from online, they don't, Print it out, you don't keep it in a file, then you have problem with it. Prepare the list of reference showing all the sources that contributed information to the paper. So you need a file, one file. And one paper publish on a certain topic, one file. So preparing the final draft, type the final draft with the manuscript, following whatever format of journal which the paper is going to be submitted. This should be done by the by the first of uh, the corresponding author. And a good revise a good research paper. It can be produced by following the step-by-step step step prescription, moving from subject to topic to hypothesis to thesis. However, in some instances, recover, re, uh, require revision of earlier research in every step. So writing the way, uh, writing paper is, you follow step-by-step, step, but sometimes 
you need to go back, go back, look at the reference, and look at the introduction whether uh, it fits to the scope of your your study. So then you will change the reference. You add more references and so on. So require revision uh, time and again, and finally you come up come up with the final. I think this is a very straightforward thing all of you here have experienced, I think especially for life space is not big deal. Think for students and learning process. General form of research paper is we got it in uh, in uh, author's guideline in most journal they show this. Title page, abstract, introduction. It lo looks easy, but you need you I say needs experience, practice. Then you know for example title title page how it looks like because if you send your article and you don't follow uh, the general guidelines, it looks very busy or it looks very untidy. You know, page title, abstract, all this up. It will just uh, turn them off. So at the editor chief level, they just reject. Them. So you have to be, uh, you have to follow guidelines. Most of them very strict. So abstract introduction, sometimes materials and methods separated, we start discussion together, sometimes actually. So there are various uh, reasons or there are various ways to change uh, the setup for, for their uh, sections or sequence of uh, sections. Okay, this are uh, thing just twelve point standard format, some of course less Times New Roman always been use A4 paper, single sided, some some double space, yeah, number page, number page, and so on. This uh, space limits very important. Let's say they say they want you to have six thousand words, follow six thousand words. The basic case six thousand five hundred is okay. And tables, you say limit number of tables to five to six, so you have to avoid placing the head, adding, and this is just like writing thesis. To divide your figure or table, confine to a single page, and then title page is very important. Yeah? Select an informative title. I think, based on experience, the thesis or anything, uh, the title really, although it's a short, it may be a some one line or two lines of uh, sentence, but it's a very important component of a manuscript. Sometimes you spend a few hours eh, trying to come up with a good title for the paper. Select an informative title because title reflects the entirety of the of the paper. So you, you, when you get a title that then will exclude part of your work, that's not the title. But it cannot be too general. General then it be a review, review article. Be very specific based on the scope of your your paper. Select an informative title. Look for a topic that can be easily covered within the sign limits of your paper. They have to include name, address, or new kid, <coughs> who is the corresponding leading author. And this example, uh, just to show you, paper published, uh, this is page title, uh, first page, title page is abstract. Abstract, generally, summary is about a few hundred, 200 less, sometimes to 300, we refer to guidelines. But they could be concise one paragraph, sometimes structured, I'll show you what structured abstract later. A minute or less, a reader can learn the rationale behind the study because it stands, stands on its own. So you don't need to read the full paper, or read the abstract, they have some idea what, what is the paper all about. It, it, in a minute or less, a reader can learn the rationale behind the study, general approach to the problem, pertinent results, and important conclusions or new questions. So, writing abstract, write the summary after the rest of the paper's coming. Some, some people write the abstract first, but we can people's uh, we start the approach. But to me, it's, it's, I think I'm more comfortable to to write a summary after completed the full paper. Then you know what I think to write and within the scope. So economy of words is very important throughout any paper, especially in abstract. Very important abstract. So uh, sometimes the editor chief just read abstract. Your paper can be very good, but the abstract is lousy. So they can just stop that. Okay? It's, it's not a good record. Your abstract didn't really reflect the quality of your work. So, although you want the paper to uh, the abstract to be concise, be short, yeah, use complete sentences and do not sacrifice readability for brevity. 
very important. You have to make you have to make sure that all the important information the paper has to be there. You can keep it concise by wording sentences so that they serve more than one purpose. This is English. Writing skills facilitating, right? So sometimes you can write the the objective and the method in one sentence. But it's not easy. But some people prefer to do it separately, structure. Depends on the skill and the skill. Especially if they want you to write 150 words. So you have that's why I say sometimes you have to spend hours to come up with a good abstract. Uh, so what are the elements that are abstract? Include the following elements in any abstract. Try to keep the first two items to no more than one sentence. Sometimes you have big one line on the background. Some some general they are one you to benefit that one line or two, maybe two lines on the background. And then very important, this is structure. This is structure, we said structure abstract. Purpose of the study. But this is our questions objective, the first, first part of it. And then the, the methods, experiment, model, organism, system, a brief description of the experiment. And the result. And the result, we have a lot of results, but you highlight, you need to highlight, you need to highlight what important outcome you study, including specific data. If the results are quantitative in nature, you have to report the quantitative data. The most active compound, for you. The I, IC50 value, micro more, the unit is so very important. So result of any statistical analysis should be reported. And then important conclusion or question, just one line, we need to follow from the experiment. These are the structure, the structure very common way of writing. And then typical, this is common, uh, very, very general, single paragraph, concise, always written in past tense. Always written in past tense, yeah? Very important. It should stand on its own not refer to any other parts of paper, such as figure or table. No reference in that shape. So it stands on its own. Focus on summarizing results. Limit background information to a sentence to a seat. Sometimes some journal they, they allow you to have a bit of background online. But, but that's not that important in most journals. Report in, a, in an abstract must be consistent with what was reported in paper. Correct spelling, clarity of sentences and phrases, and proper reporting of quantities. Proper unit significant figures. Uh, very important. Is I just show you the abstract. You can what you can do. Uh, you can first. This is draft one, draft two. Just well, this is this is the objective and methods, and these are the experiment. These are the result. The conclusion something like that. Okay. Keywords as you know, they're very important. They want this for referencing. Uh, these words should be important ones. Not in your title. Probably not in your abstract. So choose it. Choose the keywords as one in the data abstract. This is uh, this was positive computer search. So introduction should be should not exceed two pages. No? Don't make it too long. And follow the guideline for this. Purpose of introduction is to acquaint the reader with the rationale behind the work with the intention of defending. It's just like I said, properties and then narrow down focus. So we start maybe for paragraph one on the general scenario, talking about disease, cardiovascular. We are, talking, we are working on atrocerosis. Talk about cardiovascular facility between lines. And then later on, there have to be flow of thoughts. It cannot be jumpy. And then go to atrocerosis. And then later follow the, the, the plan or the compound you just want to work on. So when people read it, they can follow very nicely. So first, I say prop is, and then narrow down focus. The purpose of introduction is to, as I mentioned just now, it, place, it, it places the work in the theoretical context. So introduction is actually theoretical. Yes, we show to, to provide information, what's been done before, what's relevant, hypothesis, objective of your the research problem, and so objective of your work. And enable the reader to understand and appreciate your objective. Okay, writing introduction, which is very widely, however, flowing features can produce an effective introduction. Discuss the important study, provide a broad context in the beginning, and then defend the model. Why did you use this particular organism or system? Why you use this compound? Why you use this animal model? You must, you must comment. You might comment on its suitability for a theoretical point of view, as well as indicate particular reasons for using it. This is all to be supported with previous study references. Provide a rational, state your specific hypothesis, objective, describe the reasoning that lead you to select. So look back at your introduction. Is there any hypothesis there? When you're talking about research question, it has to be there. Sometimes it's invaded. In the, in the sentences, but they should be there. 
where very briefly describe the experimental design and how it accomplished the stated objective. So we very some some journals want want you to have just two paragraphs. Don't know, don't go into all this detail, but some good journals, especially if you want you to, they have at least three, four paragraphs, or maybe minimum of two, very, very solid on, on the, especially on the, on the background. <coughs> Style, always use past tense, except when, when referring to establish. These are things that I've formed based on my own experience, students need to really train themselves. Yeah? When to use past tense, when to use present tense. You, cannot, you don't have to be good, really good in English. But if you practice, practice, and uh, on time, I think you can improve on this. Uh, sentence, sentences should have one or two related ideas. They should be short, but full stop should not be added so deliberately <coughs> that the writing does not flow. So no, don't have too long words, yeah? too long sentences, sorry, too long sentences, uh, uh, and too many full stops. And there should be a flow of thoughts. And also, cannot one, one paragraph, another paragraph cannot be jumpy. Jumpy means from one story to another story, there should be some relation. So, they organize the ideas, making one major point with each paragraph or contain a series of related ideas. So, present background information only as needed in order to support the proposition, state the hypothesis, and this other mention just don't pay attention to spelling, clarity, appropriateness of sentences and phrases. So superfluous, this is, this is why I said you write two flowery words. Words should be avoided and use familiar, precise words rather than far back words. <coughs> so material matters, I think these are things that I think you cannot be current this. So problems with some of some students, my own students, they come up with a paper with a very high similarity terms. <coughs> and look at the turning in. And most of it due to Mitchell's method, kind of this, from previous course working in the same group. So their seniors are using the same method. Kind of so this is the part that you need to really sit down and try to come up with your own uh, sentences. But of course, the meaning has to be there, the, all the information has to be there. There's no specific page limit, but keep this section as concise as possible. Okay. And material matters may be reported under separate, so and so on. Subjectives to document, these are important. Why? Why you? have to write good material semantic section because somebody else wants to repeat this one. <coughs> want to prove whether it's one as well or That's why you need to write document all specialized material generalized procedures so that another individual may use some or all of the methods in another study or judge the scientific merit of the work. Remember recently when uh, Japanese scientists committed suicide because uh, was her her work was uh, highly publicized and she got an award and like that. And then somebody somebody some other group repeated the work couldn't get results. And then Japanese, you know them, they are very uh, the yo talk, right? <laughs> so committee she's a lady and then uh, committee right? because she repeated the work, get result, couldn't couldn't get it. So maybe something technical technicalities or something happening. It's not to be step and step description of everything, not a method section instead of section. In particular, it's not supposed to tell a story. Okay. So describe materials separately. Okay, this is the style and so on. Do not include commonly found supplies such as test tube, standard lab equipment such as centrifuges, spectro. Don't say you're using 250 mil test tube. So nobody wants to know about that. Necessary containers or materials must be put in a separate paragraph, or else they may be identified along with your procedures. In biosciences, we frequently work with solutions. Refer to them by name and describe completely, including concentrations of all reagents and pH equal solution. If solvent, if non equivalent for granted, that is not important. You need to, look, especially bio bioscience, doing bioassay. Uh, writing matter section is cut, methodology completely, including size specific temperature, incubation time, so on. Concise, be concise. As a matter of reading, devoted to specific procedures, group of procedures. Generalize, report how procedures were done, not how they were specifically performed on a particular day. So you don't use first person uh, sentence, yeah? you cannot say I, I, we. That we have third person. <coughs> For example, report samples were diluted to a final concentration of two milligrams per meal protein. You don't report 
one, this is your raw data. Identify microliters of sample was diluted with 300 microliters of buffer to make a good timber solution. This is an integrated report. Okay, mm, no report well known procedure. Yes, you mentioned the reference, the number of reference, ACA property. Identify what you use as very important. Standard, missing. Many, many, many manuscripts, they don't have control, negative control, positive control. You need to make sure that you have. Sometimes you, you have it in the result section, but it's not in the method section. So, include mm -hmm. statement on approval, ethical committee, this is also very important. They, they, won't, they won't proceed with the reading of your paper. Use third person passive voice and avoid using first person active voice. So that the focus of reader's attention is not on you, it's on the world. Okay, use normal prose in this, and in every other section of paper, avoid informal use, list and use complete sentences. <coughs> what to avoid? Materials methods are not a set of instructions. So sometimes students follow manual instruction, and then kind of place put in a method, in the material, so then that shouldn't be the way to write. Omit all explanatory information and background, and save it for discussion or meet information that is irrelevant to a third party, such as what color ice bucket you use, okay, what color your, your thing of the. Uh, it's not important, not, not uh, relevant to the research project. So results, page length of this session set uh, by the amount and type of data to be reported. So it's also very important. Results, then you know whether you have enough data to be submitted to uh, a good journal or just uh, you want Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, depends on your result. Sometimes it's just a small paper publication. Small paper means very limited right? or not significant result. So you go for small paper for Q3, Q4. But you have big paper, a lot of data, then go for Q1, Q2. So you, have, you know it. I think when you work, you know the quality of it. So, and the purpose of results section is to present, illustrate findings, make this section a completely objective report of results, and save all interpretation. Unless you are writing result discussion together, so you, after result, you can continue followed by discussion. But it's results section on its own, so make sure you just report the results in the results section. Don't, don't uh, include uh, the discussion before. Okay, this English material that would normally be included in a research article from any raw material. Uh, summarize your findings, the types of things, these are things that you need to advise you have time. Control, discard, result control experiment, very important. Although you think that is your test sample is very important, but control experiment is also very important. Okay, it should be there. And you don't uh, present your data in in figures, in graph, and in the text. No redundancy. You present your, your results in table, they are two in table. The, the text can describe or highlight what are the results in the table, that's all. And you don't, don't present in, in many, many ways. So what to avoid, do not discuss or interpret your result, report background information, or attempt to explain anything. Never include raw data or intermediate calculation with research paper. Do not present the same data more than once, I say. So just present the form table, enough no more in the form of graph and so on. Text should complement any figures or table, not repeat the same information. That's very important. So <coughs> you, when you write in the text, you can highlight some information in the table. That's all. A few lines. So, and always use past tense, then refer to result. Put everything in logical order. Okay, and then you have to figure, figure one, figure two in order. And don't jump. Figure one is at the end, figure two is in front. Place figure table properly numbered and so on. May place figure table properly within the text of the result section. Depends on general. Some general, they want it. You have the tables at the end after the reference to some. You have to insert in the paper in the text. Okay. Uh, then discussion. General guidelines have to be followed. Space, space is so valuable. Usually authors are asked to restrict discussion to four pages and so on. Practice economy of space, and there should be plenty of space. You didn't wish to say all you need to say. Objective is to provide interpretation results and support for all conclusion. 
using evidence from experiment you really accepted now. <coughs> so discussion is, uh, I think, the most typical part is the discussion. So you need to have a lot of references to support your result. If your result, for example, you have something that is not generally obtained by other scientists, so you need to explain why. So you have to discuss, you have to uh, compare with previous, whether it's in, in contrary or in agreement with what you have obtained in your study. And also the significant study have to be, to be highlighted. Interpret the data in appropriate depth. We want to get it published in Q1, Q2, in, in appropriate or great depth. We want to go, for example, in bio, in bio essay, go into the mechanism of action. It's not like one, one stop, a touch and go type. You see, it's active in a debate, and then I see it together. You, know. you will need to support your work with mechanism action study. So then it's good for Q1 and Q2. So this means that when you explain the phenomenon, you must describe mechanism that may count for the observation. So if the result differ from your expectation, explain why. You just cannot stop that. It's need a lot of information, previous paper, previous work, need to, to support or agree to disagree with your output. And you need to discuss, explain, justify. Then describe the theory that can support, support your work. It's never appropriate to simply state that the data agreed with expectation and stop at that. Case style, I think this is referred, this is by the Polo Regional, and then literature. Okay. Now you go to publication strategies in matter of 15 minutes. So, uh, why do you want to become, what do you want to become as yourself in your career? <laughs> you want to become a teacher, administrative staff, a consultant for business ventures, a social worker, or a professor. <coughs> so you want to become a professor, you need publications with high impact factors and many citations. You don't have choice. Maybe you have different administrative administrations on a long process, people come and go, but if you are there, in your, your career as a scientist, you want to become a professor, you need publication. You high impact factors and many citations. You have to develop a publication strategy, depending on your career goal. So you know yourself that. So you have to develop your own publication strategy. People will say publish or perish. Is, uh, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, you have to publish, rapidly publish, continue publish your work to sustain and to make sure that your career progress. It's very important. You want to be in the academic line, to be a researcher, you don't have choice. You publish or you perish. Why? Because publications are measures of research quality. It improve your track record, your CV, your value data, and academic career progression. You gain formal recognition of your contribution to science. As in UKM, they say excellent performance based on three R, relevant, referred, and respected. Okay. Strategic dissemination of research findings and potential research impact. So research findings publish people up, up in your area, your peers need to meet and need to know you in your area. You have to be visible. And of course, you have to improve, it will improve your writing skill. As I said, experience, <coughs> practice, experience, practice, then you can put your like this case just like Einstein. What are low and high practice is I think most of us know, just uh, to show you the, the differences between different domains. Different domains have different numbers. Some areas have impact factors of best general below four. For example, in chemistry, uh, if you get impact factor four or three and above, it's very good. Well, ten is really very good unless you talk about nature, multidisciplinary general, but strategic general, uh, maximum four is a good very good. And some general at 1.8 is Q1. Yeah? But some areas, the best general are areas, their impact factor is very high, sometimes 10 to 80. So it depends on the So uh, you cannot just generalize things. So you need to look at yeah, different domains. People in technical area, people in biological science, people in medicine, People in pharmacy, I think pharmacy, this is the one I think in pharmacy general, and Q1, maybe I'm a bit biased in my area, it's above three. Three is Q1. And then two and three Q2, sometimes two and above also Q1, depends on I think pharmacy practice. Q, uh, Q1, two something, so Q1, yeah. 
fitness. And then if it's between one and two, Q3, and less than one is Q4. So I'm going to touch a little bit on all this. Actually, there are a lot of things you can discuss in publication strategies, but these are things I think give it a time. I can, we can discuss on uh, these uh, different uh, topics. How should you publish your paper? Where to publish your paper? And good authorship practice. This is JP. At this I invite myself. G. <laughs> good, good agriculture practice or, or good authorship practice or ethics. <laughs> How should you publish your paper? Publication of small papers or big papers? It depends on you, your how you relate with your supervisor. It depends on your the stage of your career. Uh, as for me, when I was growing up, you know, and as a researcher, I publish a lot of small papers because you don't have many people around you to help. It's a training process. But you are, if you are lucky, you have people or the experts around you, you can start publishing big papers right away. You interact with them, collaborate with them. So it depends on the situation. So, but it's very important for you to decide. Small paper based on a significant amount of data. Or after one year, master students, they want to get promoted, convert to PhD, they publish small data. Or small, small paper. Because you want to get a criteria published. You, have, you get one big papers, you have to wait maybe two years of PhD work. So small paper based on insignificant amount of data or negative results. Some some journal they accept negative results, but of course small paper. And then you can publish in Scopus or ISI WS journal with low impact at the Q4. Which is okay. I'm not saying don't publish in Q4, Q3, it depends on the output, the quality of your work. Big paper based on good work and extensive data is Q1, Q2 material. And don't publish big data, good data in Q4. That's why you need to interact. You need to ask your peers before for advice. And it's happened many times. You look at paper, any paper, this paper should be in Q1. Why should it be published in Q4, Q3? So such a waste. Waste means, in other words, in other words that it can be better published in a, a good journal, a better journal for, for, for more uh, visibility, more of an impact. This is all about quantity versus quality. Where do you want to go for quantity or quality? I think it depends on different stage of your career. When you are already associate prof or you're already a professor, go for quality. You don't go for quantity anymore. But you are progressing up, maybe. As I said, if there people behind, around you, you don't have enough people to interact to help you, then maybe small paper, quantity may help. And yeah, once you, you grow up, you become more uh, experienced in, in, in writing than in research, then you can come up with uh, big papers. So it's a matter of quantity versus quality. You decide yourself. Yeah, depends on the situation. Of course, CV with a long list of low impact papers or high impact papers are very important. Because when you want to submit your, for promotion, if you have a lot of papers, let's say you have 20, 20, 20 papers, but all are low impact factors. And a lot of them are scopus. So people know the quality of work, what type of uh, scientist you are. And the people of somebody come up with Q1, Q2, all the way, then you know he's a good researcher. So, so publication, how to publish your paper is very important. Maybe, as I said, uh, in fact, in the beginning of your, your research career, if it's possible, you try to go for the high impact at the general. I'm not saying that you can publish in Q3, Q4. Okay, how should you publish your paper again? A peer review system should be there. You get feedback and constructive criticism from, from your peers and experts before submission of papers to journal. This, I think, have been done in the faculty. That's why we are doing all this workshop on this being killed. Uh, we interact, we get info, uh, feedback from the peers who help. To suggest to improve, you know, supervisors doing that for our students. It's a very important process, a peer system, a peer review system. And some people, they work on their own in isolation and it's too bad. Because how good you are, at my level, not pension in the two years, I got rejection from, you know, 
So nobody can say you are already, uh, you reach a level that perfect, yeah, get everything what you want, no. Still a process, learning process. So establish strong networking locally and internationally, very important. Build a network of contacts, especially renowned scientists, which may lead to collaboration opportunities. You can write papers together. This has been proven by many of us, I think myself, I think Brock Cairo, and some others here have been doing this. If you can write on your own, I think the most I can write is maybe five, six papers. I cannot write 17 papers in one year. To be practical about it, you need to collaborate. It's not you are, I'm not saying that I don't contribute, but I will, I'm not the corresponding author for all the 17 papers. That's the way to work. Okay, be visible and recognize at international and national conferences to meet and interact with top editors and reviewers of this helps very much. Okay, contribute as reviewers if you are invited. Don't just ignore. You are too busy, don't have time, just ignore. You should make yourself available, then recognize people, people will know you. People will invite you for conferences and so on. And then sign, you meet top editors, reviewers of journal. That means make it easier for you. You have thousands, hundred thousand people, I skip in some to journal. But if you have a name, then they, and people know you. I'm not saying that you, you submit a lousy paper, but more chance for you to get it trapped or sent to you, because they know you. Where to publish your paper? Of course, aim for high publication. Flagship, top journal, Q1. You know your area, you know your domain. You, you have the list of that. You have been publishing that area, so list it. Go for Q1 first. You, however, do not waste time. If the quality of research work, you know it has not reached the appropriate level for high impact publication you want. You know your service is a small paper, so don't waste your time. So it takes time, maybe one, one month, two months, better, rather better than good for uh, low impact factor journal. But if you think you have come up based on input from the peers, that is a good paper, then go for high publication. Q1, flagship journal, top journal. <coughs> Only for go for low impact factors Q2 and below when your paper has to be rejected by Q1 journal. This is strategy. Sometimes they got your paper got I got my publication Q Q3. So that is three behind it. So you know maybe it's not being rejected by Q1, Q2. So it's just that's the reason why publishing Q3. So it's the publication strategy of, of individual. So selection journal. You can select journal based on, we usually go for impact factor. Second, select a journal based on its impact factor. Impact factor indication of quality. Impact of a journal according to the number of articles that have been recited over a given period of time. You can, you, you can Google the journal citation report and give you the impact. In fact, you can provide that uh, information. The, but may, lead, may need to weigh this up against rejection rates. So you have to go for, based on impact factor, you have to be uh, willing to accept rejection. <laughs> so, uh, but of course you can also select journal based on the content. So you develop a follow-up article that relates to one that has been previously published in the same journal. So you know your area. So you have to look at papers, commonly pub your paper, paper published in what journal. Yeah? So, then publish in, in that mimic structure, format, writing style, so you have to follow exactly. Based on what journal. And, uh, and then the significance of research and whether it fits the scope of the publication. Is your area very specific, specific discipline or multidisciplinary? So you have to know. And then submit, you can also submit to special issues addressing your research area. So this needs a lot of uh, reading, needs a lot of, you have to be up to date. Yeah? Be, be well informed about the journals in your area. Sometimes you be in their mailing list, so they send you special edition, invite you to be guest editor, this and that. So select a journal based on the content, and then check the journal website for author, which is very important. Then this is, don't waste your time. Go to the author guidelines, follow exactly what they ask, the line structure, referencing, submission guidelines, online submissions, so on. And then you, this also need to be considered. Especially you want to publish your paper very fast. You want to graduate PhD, dual paper, two papers, master's one paper. So you don't go for general at least one year from day of submission until you can publish. 
So journal publication in the Times is also very, very important to be determined. Peer review process may take one, three months. Revision journals really provide a deadline, one, six months. Publication scheduling can take three, six months after financial suit. But now faster, I do be careful with this predators, eh? publishers. Sometimes they just say publish in one month. So we usually cannot, most, most journal takes maybe at least three months. To be careful with And then uh, this is another constraint for us now, publication. I think the woman just mentioned this now. So there's a lot of good papers, why can I publish? Why? Because there's a lot of money. During when I was in trade, I never paid for my publication. I only know how to pay when I was in This is just about five years ago. Before then, you really publish in Turkey, you know, but even now, Turkey general has options. You can publish a normal way without, without uh, publication fees. But you want to have the open access, they provide it now, then you pay. And easily 3,000, 5,000, 6,000. Mm -hmm. So when you apply for grants, you have to allocate votes to allocation for publication. Yes. Okay. Yes. So open access requirement, I think it's a burden to, to researchers. I think shouldn't be a burden. I think you have to do something about it. Because you come up with all good paper publication, and then finally, you got accepted, let's say Q1. I cannot publish it because you don't have money. This is very unfortunate. So this is a very important issue and we need to discuss at the management level. Yeah. This is what I mentioned. Good authorship practice is very sensitive issue. In fact, my own, my own experience students, new students, they they wrote to me why my name is in second, I do a lot, things like that. Why? But never asked me why I'm the first one author. <laughs> So some students are there, but because it's a learning process, I explain to you why, the reason why. Okay. Discuss authorship criteria with all authors to reach an agreement at a very early stage so that everybody is satisfied. Okay. Happy. Who should be the corresponding author and who is the first author? Okay. Authors feel their contribution being recognized because we try doing that with the GAP. Authors feel their contribution being recognized and rewarded. Okay, absolutely crucial to develop a lasting working relationship. Very important. You want a student to come up, with graduated, and then they come back and collaborate with you. Very important. But you don't want them to work with you as a student later on, they forget about you. Because you don't like the way you, uh, when we write papers together. And also, the same thing with colleagues in the faculty. You have one publication, two publication, then you stop collaborating anymore. Because you don't agree on the GAP or don't practice GAP. So that's very important, sensitivity, uh, ownership of, 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 of people, contribution of people be recognized. And order of names of authors has to be based on the, this is my opinion, yeah? orders of names of authors has to be based on the level of contribution and possibly the seniority and reputation of the authors. For example, you want to write a review article. Review article, usually you have your person reputation or the corresponding author, your supervisor. The name should always be the first. Then then the journal sometimes by invitation, and then they always have it. If you have students in front, they don't know you. They are not published anything yet. So you need to have some TV reputation to be there. Sometimes it's okay to have students' name in front, but the supervisor's name has to be there. At the end, and he has to be the course winner. No, you don't, you have a new researcher, you have students, you never write a review article by yourself. Most probably you won't be accepted. Okay, especially if you put the journals. Ethics is my last slide. You will never republish materials or data that have been published elsewhere. A very, very bad practice. You have published it somewhere and then you republish it right in a different way, different title. It's been done before. People got uh, blacklisted for this. Never report data as yours that are not yours. Okay. No double submission. Only send your paper to another journal if it has been rejected by previous Avoid fragmenting your research data for multiple publications. Uh, you have small papers, small papers, small papers. Want to get numbers. So we don't do that. You say you do it. Uh, in natural product chemistry, you have 20 compounds. You publish 10 compounds first, and then 10 compounds first. It's not an ethical practice. You have to work all the 20 compounds in one paper. Do not plagiarize. Yeah? Determine the Smith index of your paper first. This has been done by the supervisor. Now we have the the uh, So some general allow 20%, some very strict 15% depends on the general. 
So don't do or submit your paper without sending to uh, submit to TNI because it's your reputation. Especially you are already people know you already, and then you send send your paper, your article. Uh, this meeting that is forty percent. So when anybody want to write your name or put your name in the paper, you have to make sure you have uh, some input, some knowledge about it. Otherwise, it carries name and the paper is poor, then it can tarnish your image. So do not include person who are not contributing as an author. No passenger, please. This, this is practiced by, by a good scientist. Once you start to have a number of names who are not contributing, and people will turn around and say, oh, this is being practiced by this scientist. He's been putting names no. everywhere. So you have to establish establish yourself as a person who are very ethical in writing papers. You don't contribute, no way. Just acknowledgement. Even your boss, because he controls the money, he's not contributing, no way his name should be there. Then you build up, build up your personality in, 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 in the scientific world, because your person is very ethical. So that's a very important way to OK, thank you very much. You have to work as a team. One leader, there cannot be too many leaders in the research team. One leader to follow. Thank you. So, uh, thank you uh, to Prof. Brian. So, any uh, questions or any discussion that are open to the floor? Yeah, that's me. Thanks for the tips and the heads up. Uh, just want to the discussion, though. Um, I was told, like, uh, years ago, that I'm going to this. Um, you should not um, repeat your results in the discussion because this is the easiest thing to do. And you see this is done by especially uh, many students when they want to start the discussion and start with the results. The statement of results. So is that a norm? Is it an acceptable practice? Um, and then for discussion, you say it is also good that you highlight the weakness or limitation of the study. It will be a good discussion if you can highlight the gaps in your study. Is that true? Maybe others, others can also share this. It depends on uh, the way you are. If results and discussion as together as a section, then you can you can describe the results followed by the discussion. For every result, discussion, result, discussion. But you have different sections of the result, discussion, then you cannot repeat. You can only highlight some of the result. For example, you present, you have presented in a table form or in a graph. Then you just highlight, highlight the findings. Then you can go a little bit. That is the redundancy. So you have separately results and discussion. In the discussion section, just highlight to uh, show the significant result. Because the question is actually discussing about the result. And when you say discussing, you want to highlight the finding, compare with previous work, the theory, mechanism, where it's different from underlying. But you cannot just, ulang uh, I cannot repeat uh, in the detail of uh, the most active compound from the is, um, and all. <coughs> you just highlight some and then you have, and then follow by discussion. For example, two on limitations. And limitation. Limitation. Mm. Well, for me, I don't. I don't say limitation. Then you are trying to lower down. For example, although we've looked at the acute effects of this, but uh, the chronic effects of this has not been um, determined in this study. So therefore, it warrants further studies. Yeah. The study is okay, but they say, oh, we didn't use ah. the we write standard, it? or we didn't use the control. I think that is killing yourself. The future, that's the future direction of your work. Yeah. What need to be done in future? Yeah. Because we, we do not have enough samples. Ah, <laughs> <to> <laughs> samples. <laughs> you do it another way. <laughs> 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 then you say your limitation, your weakness. Kalau you say what need to be done in future to improve. So what, what needs to be done to discover new things and new Prof, regarding the splitting of data, because I think what people do this now is because 
pressure is on getting the numbers of papers. So if people are still developed by numbers, not citations or quality. <laughs> By trust versus the quality versus. I think I'll ask me it doesn't really depends on what you want. For example, you want to do commercial treasury for you need to publication minimum 15. 15. If you go for quality, if you go quality Q1, buy only have 10. Yeah. E <laughs> so go for short small paper. Tapi you cannot you cannot compromise on quality. So paper is but we don't do it because for example, I mentioned this one, it's not ethical. You say, you say you are selected, do blue compound, but you publish just 10 compound blue. Yes. You know, the problem is that people in your area will know what oh, this guy's are doing. This is his practice. He's trying to stretch and stuff. You don't do that. We try to different experiment, different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From the perspective of students, I think they also have the pressure because some of the work they do are the one supervisor. It's actually uh, based on a common ground, and if they uh, slice the results, they can get more papers, but if they put all the results together, then it, it will be a more impactful research. But the thing is, they <coughs> also have the pressure to publish in order to graduate. Um, so uh, sharing papers with their colleagues will um, somehow create a problem for, or issue for some of them, uh, because not all, both of them can be the first one. Because we only consider first authorship. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, depends on the situation. Depends on yourself, let's say, yeah. students and yourself. Students, they are, they are looking at the, the chief criteria for graduation. Or they don't care, don't, most of them. That's not real good. Masters, one, one paper. Maybe two years, PhD, three years, two papers. I think at their level, at their stage, I think they're not uh, that concerned about you. Know. Tapi, as a researcher, for, for you, I think, uh, also depend on, as I said, you know, mm -hmm. you want to get promoted, you want to go for numbers, quantity, mm -hmm. go for it. Go for it. Tapi, once you are already up there, you are already a senior associate, for example, you still produce most of the time, Q4, Q4. Then at the end, you, your CV is not strong. But if you in the beginning, it's okay. Beginning is just moving up the new process. You, you know yourself. At certain stage now, I have to stop or try to reduce the number of low event. Go for Q1. Because it's an image you carry. After that, you're a professor. Then you don't publish in Q1, Q2. So, or better person. <laughs> so, but, but when moving up, you know yourself better than you really put a history of Then you have to start by the Q1, Q4, or big papers, you know, don't look for school. Student project, this is sometimes problem, they, they project to very close. So you and the experience, you have to discuss and ask the peers advice, uh, maybe the title, the title of project, the focus, the scope of the paper, Make it different. Different. Uh, sorry, yes. I think many ways it's highly influenced by the institutional policy view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For let's say, for example, you want to do a big work, uh, but the students probably would not want that. But if the institution recognize that, okay, they are both considered one paper for each even though it's one paper, that would be okay. But for them, it's still they just want to graduate. They don't care what you want to. They got numbers. Okay. Of course. Really, the big people, such as like the Nobel Prize people, what this blood was to very big project. But my child, it's a matter of opinion, your choice. For example, GOT, graduate on time. Uh, they have an award being recognized because they have a graduate on time. The 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 you also have to look at the quality. Sometimes, to help, the quality is not that high. The people, some, the, some students, we work with, you know your students, they are good. They publish Q1, you are DQ4, Q1, but they are not GOT students, you know JT graduates. To me, that's more important. Yeah. Although you want to produce fast, get GOT, but they just produce the minimum. If I think process GOT, it won't be done because GOT, yes, but I make sure that the quality should be good. But I think, I mean, myself, I don't really go for GOT for my students. I go for quality. 
And my best on the student. You know the students are very capable to go to come up with that task. So it's okay for you to uh, to be uh, for them to stay longer with you. Not GOT, maybe rather than two and a half years, maybe three years, three and a half years. But they produce a lot of good results and also good for them. And then it's a scholarship, right? Yeah, scholarship. Uh, scholarship. <laughs> yeah, scholarship. <laughs> Some some still they got Zamala. They go pick they publish Q1, Q2. I think we look at it. Although they don't although they go for GOT. Some student, my student they got Zamala. They after after two years because they publish papers too. Syarah, uh, kita ada dua kumpulan uh, mentor-menti uh, untuk research uh, I think lecturer sepatutnya menggunakan peluang itulah uh, untuk mendapatkan bantuan uh, mentor uh, untuk mendapatkan uh, quality journal cuma untuk dapatkan bantuan mentor ni bukan last minute bila nak tulis baru nak pergi cari suruh mereka review it's unfair for, for the mentor side also lah Sepatutnya kena bring uh, on board the mentor pada awal-awal research tu. Research process. Uh, research process tu, suatu proposal tu, the mentor is already there. You know, so keep up like that. Uh. Single ke publication. So I hope uh, they not just the young ones lah. Like, we can can start to to talk to the mentor about what planning about your your research and also your publication in the future. So, kalau tak ada apa lagi, so kita akan, untuk hari ini kita buat hari yang kita blog untuk penulisan Dan next week, Syida akan uh, mendapatkan maklumat berkaitan uh, artikel lah yang yang dicadangkan Artikel yang ini, sebab ini dah berjumpa tahun, meaning this is for 2017 punya uh, papers lah Actually, ya yeah, So, I hope everybody can can work on, on your papers tahun hadapan. So, itu saja. So, terima kasih kepada program sekali lagi dan semua yang hadir. Thank you. Uh, so, yang kita ada buka komputer ni kita buka komputer ni, dalam ni ada database about all the papers yang kita dah sediakan beberapa CD yang lepas So, tolong update the, the status of the paper, either reject ke, review ke, dah sampai mana kita nak, kita nak pantau lah Okay, so, so siapa yang dah submit tu, please update lah Yang untuk hari ni, kita akan by Monday lah kita dapatkan title tu okay.